Okay, welcome back to members of 121 Community Church in Grapevine, Texas, in our ongoing study in the book of Revelation. We're going to take a look at uh, the last cover letter, the cover letter to Laodicea, and then we're going to take a look at the vision on the Isle of Patmos of the throne room of God. Let's begin with block one. And concerning Laodicea, we read, I know thy works, and that you are neither cold nor hot. I will spew you out of my mouth. You say you are rich, and you have need of nothing, and you don't even know that you are spiritually miserable. Christ is described as the Amen, the faithful and the true. The Amen and the true are the abbreviated under faithfulness. If you cross-reference Isaiah 65, we read, Behold, I create a new heaven and a new earth. The notion of faithful witness comes from Isaiah 43. And my servant whom I have chosen, that you may know and believe. Christ is the beginning of the new creation of God. And the church in Laodicea needs to become the faithful and true witness. They are in desperate need of renewal. They have become lukewarm. So in verses 16 and 17... The Old Testament idea was that if Israel enjoyed material wealth, welfare, then they were, they considered themselves to be faithful in the covenant. But for Laodicea, they prospered materially because they had compromised their faith with pagan culture. They had given in to the pagan culture. But the Old Testament idea is uh, illustrated in Hosea 12.8. I have become rich. They shall find no iniquity in me. Spiritual compromise had come about due to economic factors in Laodicea. The church contrasts with Smyrna that was economically poor but spiritually rich. And Laodicea was economically rich but spiritually poor. The way John puts it, in reality the church at Laodicea was wretched spiritually, miserable and poor spiritually. They're need, in need of renewal, therefore verse 18. You need the renewal of refined gold, the renewal of white clothing, the renewal of eye salve. Refined gold equals the removal of sin, Clothed in white equals non-participation in pagan culture, and ISAV is spiritual discernment. The cross-reference John 9, I have come into the world that the blind might see. The church at Laodicea needs spiritual perception and renewed vision. They need a renewed vision. The letter closes out in verses 20 through 22 concerning the overcomers, like every other letter. To he that overcomes, he will sit with me in my throne. The invitation to renewal is given in verse 20. I stand at the door and knock. The overcomers will be granted ruling positions in the Messianic kingdom if they open the door of their heart to Christ for renewal. In cross-reference Luke 22, I appoint unto you a kingdom. It's all about renewal. Laodicea is in desperate need of renewed vision of the kingdom. From here we move on to the vision on the Isle of Patmos of God's throne room. Let's go to block 2. Chapter 4 begins, verses 1 through 3. In verse 1, the introductory description, a door is opened in heaven. And the first voice heard by John is that of a trumpet. And it says, I will show you the things which must be hereafter. John says that he was taken up in the spirit and that there was a throne set in heaven. And one singular set on the throne. Cross-reference Daniel 2. John always goes back to Daniel. There is a God in heaven who reveals secrets of what shall be in the latter days. This vision will be eschatological in scope. The Daniel 2 prophecy has begun in Christ 
and his church. For John, the latter days are set in motion now in his time. But the latter days have not yet been consummated, but they have been set in motion. Let's move on to verse 2. Now in verse 2, we read the Enumati. John says, I was taken up in the spirit. Cross reference Isaiah 6.1, I saw the Lord sitting upon a throne and his train filled the temple. John is being summoned to Yahweh's heavenly council. John identified himself with the prophetic authority of the Old Testament. This is a New Testament prophecy with the authority of the prophets of old. Now in verse 3 we read about the precious stones and the halo. Although God's realm is separated from the earthly, he is in control of earth's affairs. All of the later judgments issue from God's throne. It is the center of John's cosmology. If you take a look at Ezekiel 1 and Ezekiel 10, and above the firmament there was over their heads was the likeness of a throne, like a sapphire stone. In the Old Testament, God's doxa glory is represented by precious stones, and a rainbow was round about the throne. Cross-reference Ezekiel 1, where a rainbow is called the glory of the Lord. It symbolizes that God's actions will be tempered with mercy. Precious stones and a rainbow or a halo mean that a new creation will issue out of heaven. We read, Iris Kuklothan to throw new, a halo was around the throne. It could be a halo or a rainbow. I prefer halo for my translation. But it symbolizes the doxa glory of God. Now we move on to verses 4 through 8 in block 3. So in block 3, take a look at uh, verse 4. Around the throne there were 24 thrones and 24 elders clothed in white with crowns of gold. Who are the elders? Probably angels identified with the 12 tribes of Israel and the 12 apostles. In other words, they represent the community of the redeemed. They represent the elect of God's new creation. In Greek, they are the uh, presbyteros, elders of the Christian assembly. Basically, they represent the elect of God's new creation. Now, verse 5, Out of the throne came lightning and thunder and voices, and seven lamps of fire were burning before the throne, and they are the seven spirits of God. We cross-reference Daniel 7 for the coming of the Son of Man. This is all about the coming of the Son of Man. Lightning and thunder represent that God will be the source of the latter-day judgments. If you cross-reference Zechariah 4, prophecy concerning the seven lamps is there. The seven lamps represent the spirit of Yahweh. John is witnessing the throne room of God in the spirit of Yahweh. Now verses 6 and 7, and I love this, in verses 6 and 7, there was a sea of glass before the throne, and around the throne were living beings full of eyes. Zoan is the Greek for living being, Zoan. The sea of glass corresponds to the laver in the temple where priests would cleanse themselves before entering into the holy area. Revelation 15.2 says that the overcomers are standing on the sea of glass as purified in Christ. They stand on the sea of glass in Revelation 15. The sea of glass is also associated with New Exodus. Now in Isaiah 6.2, above the throne stood the seraphim, the living beings, and Meso, the living beings, were in the midst of the throne. They could have been engraved in parts of the throne itself. They have the appearance of lion, calf, man, and eagle. That's very important. They have the appearance of lion, calf, man, and eagle. 
the four cherubim represent creation and the creator. The multitude of eyes represents God's omniscience. Therefore, these four living beings are the agents of God's omniscience. Now, key to understand, stand in these two verses. In the wilderness, the tribes of Israel were divided into four groups, each on a side of the tabernacle, which was in the center. Each group was identified by a stone, a precious stone, and an icon. And guess what? The four icons were lion, ox, man, and eagle. In other words, the community of the redeemed. Now, verse 8, the living beings had six wings full of eyes and not resting, singing or saying, holy, holy, holy. Cherub beings praise God without sleeping. In Isaiah 6, 3, holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The Lord of hosts is the Lord of judgment. The whole earth is full of his glory. The whole earth is full of his glory. This is a vision of the doxa glory of God that John is having. It's a vision of the doxa glory of God, and it involves the redeemed community gathered around God's throne. And it takes up the Old Testament image of the tribes that did settle around the tabernacle in the evenings in the wilderness, symbolized by the icons of lion, ox, man, and eagle. So this all comes together if we take a look at Old Testament truth, Old Testament truth that John relies on. He is leaning on the Old Testament. In this vision, he is taken up en pneumati in the spirit. It's a tremendous introduction to the vision on the Isle of Patmos. That's going to wrap up the final cover letter of Laodicea, the scene in heaven, and the redeemed community around the throne. That will take us all the way up through 4 verse 8. We'll pick up next time in 4 verse 9.